Um, first, I want to thank for this wonderful opportunity to be able to present our work and hopefully get some interesting uh, comments on it. Uh, as this uh, conference is very much about uh, how to <coughs> bridge the gap between the practice of uh, architecture and uh, research, and as I have worked uh, many years as a, a practicing architect, before I turn to research, I'll just start by uh, telling sh shortly the story of how uh, my research grew out of uh, my practice as an architect. Uh, I graduated as an architect uh, back in um, 1984, uh, and from 84 to 2008, I worked uh, at an architectural office uh, the last 10 years as a partner. And uh, we did a lot of uh, hospital uh, projects. Um, and then uh, in uh, 2007 to 8, I was project manager for uh, an intensive care unit. And in 2008, I uh, turned to uh, Aalborg University. And uh, this had to do with, uh, in connection with uh, the ICU project, uh, a research uh, project was established uh, in cooperation with uh, Aalborg University, and it was called Helene Architektur, which means uh, healing architecture. And it was uh, basically a kind of review uh, report uh, based on uh, 200 articles on uh, how uh, hospital design could uh, be improved. Uh, through research. And in 2000, uh, that, that made me change to the university, and in 2014, I defended my PhD thesis called Towards a Narrow Effective Approach to Healing Architecture. Um, but uh, especially one study in the report uh, really fascinated me, as I believe it has fascinated uh, many other people, and that was the now classical study by Roger Ulrich. Uh, which I guess you all know, in, which it shows that uh, the length of, of uh, patient uh, stays in for hospital, uh, a patient hospitalized in, in uh, identical uh, patient bedrooms uh, depends on whether they have a view to uh, nature or to the, just the hospital block opposite. Uh, but from an architectural point of view, there's, it raises some questions. Because the patient bedrooms are identical, uh, you get no information on how to design the space itself. As an architect, you, you uh, want to know how, what should you do to, to improve the space. Uh, and also, although the effects was assumed to be connected with stress and anxiety, there was no physiological data. So you didn't get some really information about which mechanism was uh, in play. So the question really was, uh, can uh, the architecture itself influence uh, the healing process by way of uh, the stress system? Uh, and to um, explore that, it's needed to uh, find a way that, uh, where the architecture can be the viable and uh, measure physiological uh, data. So I was looking for a framework that uh, kind of could connect uh, the perception of the environment to a physiological uh, impact, and I uh, <coughs> found this, uh, the series of uh, uh, Antonio de Maggio, uh, which offers that and even offers uh, an idea of how this can turn into uh, uh, a conscious experience. And also, I think uh, uh, the work of de Maggio connects uh, to what, for example, Johanny Palisma or Peter Sumtu is uh, talking about. Uh, shortly, uh, what he's talking about is what he calls the emotional feeling uh, cycle, uh, where the process starts by a non-conscious uh, uh, process. Uh, he terms emotions not to be mixed up with feelings that cause uh, <coughs> a, a process that spreads to the brain and elsewhere in the body, and then only uh, when other parts of the brain perceive this uh, changes uh, t might turn them into uh, a conscious experience. So here uh, we had a, a, a theoretical framework that, that links perception to a physiological impact and might uh, also link it to uh, uh, a conscious experience. 
Uh, also, the very basis of his uh, theory is uh, the so-called homostatic balance, um, <coughs> the idea that any living organism has uh, continuously to uh, adjust, adjust to its uh, environment in order to keep its own uh, inner balance stable. And one uh, definition of stress is that uh, the term stress describes a state of uh, threatened homostasis. So stress really uh, addresses uh, the basis of, uh, uh, of his theory. And also nowadays, uh, the connection between uh, stress and the immune system is, uh, of course, very well established. Uh, so uh, it was uh, necessary to find a way to induce stress under circumstances where space uh, could be the viable and uh, measure the relevant uh, physiological impact and, if possible, measure the uh, subjective uh, experience. And we chose to work with the so-called uh, Trier Social Stress Test, uh, which since the uh, early 1990s has been very widely used uh, uh, method for, for working with psychosocial stress. And as you can see, uh, you have a, a, a participant and you have a committee of three authoritative looking uh, persons. And uh, in the original classical uh, uh, TSST test, it has often been trained actors uh, that is instructed uh, not to show any feeling and uh, only uh, react with pre-described uh, lines. And the protocol goes like this, that there's a, a five minutes uh, baseline recording. Uh, and then uh, the chairman of the committee presents uh, the, some task to the participants. Uh, and the first one will be that he has to present himself for five minutes as if applying for a job. And then he's told that he will just get a second assignment, but not what it is. And then he has five minutes to prepare, and he gives the presentation, and then he's given the second assignment, which is counting backwards from 1,607 <laughs> in steps of 13. <laughs> and uh, every time he makes an error, he's told, uh, this was wrong, please start over again. So this, this usually uh, is quite stressful. <laughs> and then, uh, then there's uh, 40 minutes of uh, relaxation where the stress uh, slowly dies down. Then at the university in uh, Lund in, Swe in uh, Sweden, they have transferred this test uh, to a cave, a kind of a virtual reality space, where when you have this uh, headgear on, it, you have the illusion of being in a three-dimensional space. And that means that we could uh, vary the architecture of the space uh, systematically. Uh, then we, uh, for the physiological data, uh, we measured both the major stress systems. Um, uh, the <coughs> we measured the autonomic nervous system, especially, of course, the sympathetic uh, nervous system by way of heart rate variability. And we measured the stress hormone uh, cortisol in uh, saliva samples. Um, and of course, this was the most important uh, measure because uh, cortisol is also an uh, immune uh, regulatory hormone. Uh, and our hypothesis was that uh, participants will react with a more pronounced stress reaction to a, a psychosocial stressor in a closed room than in a room with openings. And this was because stress is basically a preparation for flight and fight uh, behavior and we thought that uh, the, the room with, with the openings uh, offers a potential uh, possibility for flight. And here's our results. Uh, the solid curve is uh, the closed room and the dotted curve is the open room. And here you see the sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, nervous system. Um, and actually, uh, no of them showed any significant difference uh, for uh, <clears throat> depending on, on the space. Um, but uh, the cortisol uh, did. Uh, and we could say that there is a difference. Uh, cortisol may, make, uh, the space makes a difference for the release of uh, cortisol during stress. And therefore, relating to the, the question, it potentially has uh, a possibility to influence the immune system. So that was a physiological uh, impact of the space. 
Then we try to measure the, the subjective experience. And our hypothesis was that participants will assess spaces differently depending on the potential stress reaction they will produce if faced with a psychosocial stressor in the space. And we had both uh, the people had, who had gone through the TCST test and a control group uh, to fill in a questionnaire based in a Swedish uh, system, uh, uh, based on uh, semantic system. Um, and uh, this is uh, the control group, and uh, there was a significant difference in all categories but one. But we choose not to, uh, to publish because a lot of the, uh, the participants reacted with confusion with having to fill in this uh, last questionnaire compared to the simple spaces. So we were not sure whether the, the result was produced by the questionnaire or by the space, actually. So this is uh, uh, one of the things we are going, you know, we are working on in our current uh, uh, research program uh, to, to find a better qu questionnaire. Uh, in a larger uh, uh, <coughs> perspective, I think if, if we want to work with uh, embodiment and uh, architecture, uh, this could be a way forward simply to measure on the body. Um, and also, uh, I think that uh, the use of uh, biomarkers for hypothesis testing is a useful uh, <coughs> method to have in the toolbox. Um, currently, in our research program, we are uh, working with uh, pain as a stressor instead. Um, Pain was probably what uh, Royal Udrich's uh, patients was uh, stressed by. Uh, we're trying to make, uh, uh, to, to work with other effects of cortisol. It has a, a lot of effects on, on uh, a lot of systems in the body, uh, among them uh, memory systems and uh, cognitive performance. And therefore, it's possible that uh, the design of space uh, through the stress system can influence these, uh, these systems. And then, of course, it would be very nice if uh, we one day can pre-test uh, buildings before they are, they are built by use of, uh, of computer models. And therefore, we uh, work on uh, better and more general accessible uh, methods. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, talk about uh, uh, variables and so on. And, and the tiresome thing is, of course, that uh, cortisol is not that easy to measure. And, and the sympathetic uh, autonomous nervous system uh, didn't show any reaction. Uh, so, for example, uh, skin conductance and so on would not show, uh, or probably not show uh, <coughs> uh, these effects. So we need to develop something else. Yes, that was the words. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Wait for the microphone again. Well, first, first off, uh, we, back in the mid-80s, I did some research on, with heart rate differences and, and stress with NASA on design of space cabins. And we had to normalize our heart rates and look at the change in heart rate. And that's where we found significant differences when you had changed in the environmental factors. So it wasn't the absolute heart rate, but it was changes in heart rates, especially how well people recovered from stress. On your pain, your proposed pain research, we found the best pain applier to use is a cold presser because you can get really instant response out of that and it doesn't hurt people. They pull their hand out of the cold bath and it, you know, and then, and it recovers immediately. So that's a suggestion. Yeah, yeah we are actually going to use a cold uh, pleasure test. Ah, so, good. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? First of all, I'd like to um, ask the question or questioners to uh, announce who they are, the name and their affiliation so that we can have a discussion about that. Or you can contact one another if you can. Just briefly do that. Any other questions? Okay, in, uh, yes, in the back. When you showed the, oh, Galen Kranz, uh, UC Berkeley Department of Architecture. Thank you. When, when you showed um, the, the room that had the window, it looked like it was a clear story window. 
Is that, did I read that correctly? Um, we, we simply just made a model with, with openings. It's not, it's not uh, 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 what goes, what is the word? It, it, it's not a, it's a particularly a, a window. It's just an opening and, and the floor continues uh, well, simply that, to the horizon. That's what I was confused about. I thought there's no escape. I mean, it, there was light coming in, but there was no implied way that you could walk through the window. Did but I that, read that correctly? It, uh, there's not uh, any window frame or anything that, that looks like there's a glass or anything. Anyway, I just thought because you were talking about escape that you should have actually modeled something that a person could walk through. That, that's all. And I just wanted to see if I understood what I was seeing. And I see some heads nodding in front of me, so maybe I'm not alone in thinking there was a, a mismatch between what you wanted to measure and what you depicted. So you could, there's hope for your next round. You could. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one last question. Uh, down in front, a question in front. This is the last question. Uh, Stephanie Brick, uh, Senior Architectural Designer at Sustainable Design Group. I, I think this is a fascinating study. What studies do you have planned for the future? Oh, uh, we're going to do the uh, change from the, the trade social stress test to the cold pressure test to see uh, <clears throat> if, if uh, we have a comparable uh, effect. And we'll actually do it in the same uh, computer model so that we kind of can discuss uh, the difference between uh, psychological stress and, uh, uh <clears throat> and, uh, and pain stress. And, and then we are, going, we are trying, we'll, uh, uh, in another experiment, we will uh, try to uh, compared with with the uh, cognitive tests to to see if if it affects uh, the learning ability. Uh, that's a very it's a very complicated uh, <laughs> uh, uh, way that that cortisol influences uh, uh, the what very well studied uh, the the cognitive uh, abilities. Um, <clears throat> then we are, we are working on transferring uh, the test to. Uh, to uh, head-mounted displays, mm -hmm. uh, and there are some practical problems uh, we are uh, dealing with at the moment. We, you can see your hands, for example, uh, not well enough with, with available uh, technology and so on. Um, and we will also look into decision-making later on. Thank you very much for the speakers.